I got my lunch, but you know what? The corn's hungry too, so we gotta get in the side dress applicator, get out there and feed the corn. Let's go. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Okay, we're all folded out. We've got our GPS line all set up. I gotta turn this number four hydraulic remote on. That starts the, uh, see that blue pump down on the applicator that all the hoses are coming up out of? And now you can see the pressure is up on the pressure gauge there. So we're all ready to roll. Actually, I'm following the exact same tire tracks that I did with the planter. So I've got it driven into the proper row to get started. So we'll just put it in gear, start taking off, hit the auto steer drop the applicator down, flip the switch on, and away we go. So we're gonna run it on up to about 10 miles an hour. So what we are doing right now is called side dressing. No, side dressing isn't something that you put on a side salad. <laughs> oh, you didn't think that was funny, sorry. Side dressing. We're just putting the nitrogen right off to the side of the corn. We're using a side dress applicator that was designed specifically for what we're doing right now. It has coulters, which are just like big pizza cutters that cuts a slot in the ground. And then the orifices right behind the coulters just shoot the product right down into that crack. And what that does is keeps most of the product underground and keeps it from evaporating before we get a rain and the corn gets a chance to use it. So this Raven controller is again controlling the rate just like it did on the planter when we were putting nitrogen down with the planter. There is actually an automatic flow control valve so as our speed changes, as our ground speed changes, you notice we're putting on 33.6 gallons to the acre. But if I slow down, you'll notice you'll actually see that pressure go down on the gauge. That's because that valve is actually letting more of the liquid bypass and go back into the tank. No matter how fast you're going, it will adjust quickly and then regulate your rate right back up to where you have it set. Hey, come check this out. I got to show you something. So it's 90 degrees today outside, really hot. And believe it or not, we actually had a frost that damaged the corn just a little over a week ago, about nine days ago. So here's a picture of what this corn looked like exactly a week ago today. I was freaking out. I thought I was going to have to replant half of this field and a half of the other field across the railroad tracks. But look at this corn today. I mean, it's all pretty well filled back in. It's looking pretty good. Here's a couple of plants that are still really struggling because the dead tissue got kind of all wrapped around itself and it was having trouble growing out of it. But most of these, most of these, look at this. I mean, there is some dead tissue here, but it just kind of grew up and pushed right through it. I mean, this corn looks amazing for what it's been through in the last week. All right, enough yakking back in the tractor and back to work let's go so if you've been watching this spring you know that we put nitrogen on with the planter we didn't put the full amount that the corn needs for the whole year but we did put about a fourth of it to a third of it depending on the field we were in now if you want to see what a difference that makes take a look at this you can see on the screen right here this green stripe that is a spot where i did not put on any nitrogen with the planter now take a look at what that looks like in real life See how yellow the corn is? And you can see that I turned it on right up there. I was headed that direction. I left a few check strips in every field so that we could determine if the planter application of nitrogen actually helped. Because essentially the total application between the planter and the side dress applicator is just adding up to the same amount that we would normally put on. What we're trying to figure out here is how much difference did we make 
by getting some of that nitrogen on really early with the planter. At this point, it looks like a huge difference, but if we get a rain on this field in the next week after I get this side dressing done, I'm just wondering how long it's gonna be before you can't really see that area anymore. Now, I'd like to say that all of these check strips were planned science experiments, but some of them may have just been me putting the planter down and forgetting to turn the master switch on on the Raven controller that controls the nitrogen. I, that may have happened a few times. So nitrogen is probably the most well-known of the big three food groups that the corn needs to grow and thrive. You've got your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. We get a lot of phosphorus and potassium out of the hog manure that we apply to the ground, but then we apply UAN32, which means it's 32% nitrogen by weight. Each gallon weighs 11.03 pounds, 11.0603, somebody will correct me. And then 32% of that is nitrogen. So we're getting about 3.53 pounds of nitrogen per gallon of UAN32 that we are applying. Now the super simple rule of thumb for how much nitrogen you need for a corn crop is you need approximately one pound of nitrogen for every bushel of corn that you plan to take off that field. So if we're shooting for 230 pounds of nitrogen, that means we're planning for a 230 bushel corn crop. Now that number can be tweaked up and down just a little bit based on a few factors. If you apply it all at once in the fall before, it's going to be less efficient. You're going to lose some nitrogen. Now since we're splitting our applications and being a little more efficient with our nitrogen use, we're also putting some sulfur on with our nitrogen which is gonna allow the corn to take that nitrogen up and utilize it a little bit more efficiently. We are probably not going to need one or 1.1 pounds per bushel. We might be more in the 0.9, even maybe 0.8 range. Like I say, everybody's situation is a little bit different. I don't want anybody calling me and saying, oh, Carl, you told me to put one pound per bushel. I'm not the expert. This is, this is a general number. Well, as you can see, we're just about out of liquid, so let's run back home and fill this thing up. And then let's throw the drone up in the air and get some cool drone footage of side dressing. So having these saddle tanks on the tractor for side dressing has been a real bonus because it allows me to take 2,600 gallons out to the field at once, but it does take a really long time to fill up the applicator and the saddle tanks unless you do this. Currently filling the applicator out of the ground tanks back there. And check this out, let's hurry. We're in a big hurry, people. We're in a big hurry. Currently filling the saddle tanks out of the trailer. Hey, I'm smarter than I look. So a lot of people have asked me how I farm and fly the drone at the same time. And this is pretty, this is actually pretty sweet. Okay, so watch this. All I have to do is draw a box around the tractor on the screen. And then I tell it that I want an active track. And I like to go, I like to do the parallel setting because it kind of flies along with you then. And then, so, uh, did I hit go? So active track, parallel, and then go. Okay, so now it's actively tracking us. So as soon as I start farming again, turn the nitrogen on and go, watch this. I'm not flying the aircraft at all, it's flying itself. In fact, I can just set this controller down here. It's just gonna keep following along with me and flying. I can just kind of go like this, and then it'll drive itself off into the distance. If I hit the lever the other way, it'll circle around the tractor, but then it will It'll stay with me too and keep the tractor and the implement in the center of the shot. So it really makes flying the drone a lot easier while you're trying to multitask.
So here's another really cool thing. This field had manure everywhere except this quarter of it. And so I was able to go on the computer here and make a variable rate prescription. And actually this really dark green block that I'm in right now, look at that. See, this is uh, calling for 47 gallons to the acre and this is 65 right now where I am. This little green block that I'm in right now is a spot where I did not have the nitrogen turned on on the planter. But the really cool thing is that I don't have to control the rate over here on the Raven like I normally do. This prescription that I made and put onto the John Deere monitor, it is actually controlling the rate. So when we get to the end of this green stripe right up here, it's gonna change the rate as we're going. I don't have to even worry about it. I am gonna speed my ground speed up though when we get into that new zone because the reason I'm going so slow right now is I've got the small orifices in and I'm running 60 to 70 pounds of pressure right now even though I'm going just five miles an hour. Really if I was going to put this much on I should have larger orifices but this is just a small area so if you look there it's changing the rate and I'll speed up to the next gear to keep my pressure the same. So right here we're running 32.6. I'm going to be running about eight miles an hour and uh, we've actually dropped our pressure back to about 45 psi which i like to run it anywhere between 40 and 70. i don't like to get much above 70 but it really between 40 and 70 it does a really good job of shooting that product down into the crack that those colders are making so we've got some custom application here for the neighbor and look at this cool setup that the co-op brought out to put nitrogen in two 2,500 gallon tanks on a trailer and then it just lowers the frame down to the ground and they are cone bottom tanks so you don't have any liquid that won't come out. It just drains all out the bottom and so they can pull up here with a semi and dump the whole semi into this trailer. Then I can just pull up and load out of it and they can set this in a field or anywhere. This thing is slick. So it's got a really nice Honda motor on it. 5,000 gallons of storage right on the ground here, anywhere you want it. This thing is really cool. It's got a hydraulic cylinder on it right here and a hand pump to pump up that cylinder to jack it up when you're ready to run down the road with it and put it in transport mode. That is pretty neat, pretty slick. You guys, I smell a really good smell. I need to walk over here and get closer to it. Ooh, that's a good smell. This guy that we're custom applying for today has some hay cut and it's probably ready to be raked and baled today and it smells so good. Wow, mm, can't wait. So we are actually really close to cutting hay ourselves. We're probably gonna start the day after tomorrow, I think. If the current weather prognostications stay the same, it looks like it's gonna be really dry and really hot and really low humidity and basically perfect for drying and curing hay. Not really very good for growing hay, but hopefully we get some rain after we get it all bailed up because we are really going to need it. We're getting very dry. It's been a really long time since we've had rainfall. We are very, very dry, as you might be able to tell already. But look at this. There are dark clouds in the sky. There are little bitty raindrops on the windshield. And why? Why did this happen? Because he raked his hay this afternoon. I mean, that's the only reason I can think of. Well, sadly, it is not amounting to much, just enough that I'm going to have to wash my windows tomorrow. 
kind of made a mess out of everything. We really could use some serious rain. Well, it's a beautiful day, which is actually bad news because we didn't get any rain last night and it's really hot and dry and look at the corn. You can see in any areas right now that had any compaction near driveways, the corn's turning gray and looks all spiky like pineapples right now. And the bad news is it's early in the day. It's just gonna keep spreading across the field and it's gonna keep looking like that until the heat lets up or until we get some rain. The, the leaves are actually rolling up right now to prevent the sunlight from hitting the top of the leaf. It's a defense mechanism that the corn has when it starts to get dried out too much, it curls the leaves up to try to preserve what moisture it has left in the plant because it's not getting enough moisture through the roots. So we really need some rain here and there's no rain in the forecast. So I guess the best thing to do is start cutting hay. We're gonna start mowing our hay tomorrow and I guess we're just gonna mow it all down and get it rolled up. Hopefully we'll be able to make some nice quality hay and hopefully after we get it rolled up, we'll start getting some substantial rain in the forecast because we're going to really need some. Hey, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts, just leave them right down here in the comments section. I'll do my best to get caught up. I'm a little bit behind in the comments, but I'm going to try to get caught up in the next week or two. I just love interacting with you guys down there, hearing your thoughts and sharing my answers to your very good questions. You guys come up with some of the greatest questions. In fact, sometimes I make an entire video based on some of the questions that you guys leave in the comments section. So there is that. I appreciate you hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.